Okay, so let's get it started. So our talk to finish off today is like modern Java app development in the cloud. Can sound a bit fussy, but like what we're going to talk to talk about today is uh, in, in summary is this. So we have some business logic, uh, some really simple, simplified business logic for a simple use case, and we want to take the business logic all the way through like uh, putting it in, into an application server, uh, making it into a container, building it every time we do some changes, and then suddenly into production somewhere in these clouds. And this is kind of a thing that we typically, I mean, we don't really think about it, but this is what we usually do, right? I mean, when you write some code, you want to, you just not write it just for, fun, for the fun of it. I mean, obviously we do it for partially for that, but uh, you want to make that code or that function or whatever that you're creating available for somebody else. Uh, and that's, this is kind of the idea. So we start with something simple. But before we go any further, we probably should introduce ourselves, I guess. I guess. Yeah. I guess, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so my name is Mats. Uh, I'm from Norway, working on a Norwegian consultancy company called Computas. Um, mainly Java developer, some Kotlin, uh, some front end, and good days. And with me, I have Rustam. Yes, my name is Rustam. I am working together with Mats in, in Computas, also from Norway, Oslo. I am a Java champion and also Google developer expert for cloud. So it's a short intro, I guess. And so now yeah. we can move on to, um, to the fun part. our application. Yeah. So we have super, super, super advanced, very difficult to understand a uh, piece of logic of four lines of code. And um, the idea is yeah. to be able to return something like this. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we just needed to create something, and I started with this I think I called random strings. Uh, the, the idea is it picks one noun and one adjective and puts them together and returns your random. Uh, the inspiration for that was two-factor authentication that we have in Norway, because when you log into something, it would show you two words, and then those two words will also show up on your phone, and if it's the same, you just say yes. Uh, we've also seen something similar of, uh, for, for naming Docker containers and things like that. So but the point is something very simple. It's how hard can it be to write something like that, right? Yeah, so this is like when you rent once, you get, for instance, valid Epicurean. If you rent again, you get something, something completely else, right? So the business logic, uh, which is step one on this road from nothing to production, it's like, this is the business logic. That's pretty much all of it, including some logging. We're only missing uh, two very long, long enums. And that's the only thing that we're not having here. Or oh, actually, wait, wait, we don't use it here. This is not the, co this is actually reading from file and put it, yeah. Yeah, we even have a feature flex. Oh yeah, they are there, okay, yeah, anyway. Yeah. 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 Well, this is all there is. This, this is all it is. In, in a bit more, uh, Further down the road, we created two enums. That's what it was. But anyway, uh, the idea is you have this piece of code, but you, you can't really, I mean, the way it is right now, you can't really execute it, right? So you can always slap on a main method and make it run, but uh, okay, then you will make it available for yourself. But if you see uh, here, we kind of made a few assumptions, right? We made an assumption that it should be available on some kind of URL. We made an assumption that it should be some kind of JSON-like thing back, so we kind of have a, some kind of REST-ish service, and so on, so on, so on. And that's the idea. So this talk is a kind of an opinionated set of things showing you uh, the, the road from uh, non-running piece of code to a serverless something out in the cloud. And like I said, it's going to be opinionated. We picked some, we made some choices to, to, to make it happen, uh, but we'll talk around other options. You're more than welcome to ask about other things and questions and things. And um, yeah, you can build a similar thing on totally something different uh, of a platform. So. We talked a little bit about running code, but since we do not want to just put on a main method, we want to make it as a REST, as a REST service and um, have web URL availability and all that. So we want to use a micro profile and by the, by, with micro profile, we'll also be pulling down Jakarta E, parts of it anyway. 
And yeah, that's pretty much it. Have you heard? You should probably. Micro profile. Anyone you've heard before? Good. Very good. Pretty Perfect. Much everyone. Good. It's 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 getting better and better because we've done similar micro profile talks over the years. And in the beginning we would ask like anyone and there would be like two hands and then you would ask about something like a spring boot or anything and it would be like you know people with both hands and stuff um, <clears throat> so it's it's nice to see that you know th things are uh, de de developing in the right direction yep. so probably we should not spend too much time on macro profile since you've heard about it but we'll yeah. just kind of yeah, so like to let you know like what the, what we users usually say to developers when when we, we tell them like what is micro profile, we can go real fast through this. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's open source community specification for you know enterprise Java. Uh, I guess if you're taking yeah. anything from this slide is that it is a specification and not implementation. Implementation comes by the well uh, providers of the runtime. Yeah, this is from the official slide deck for micro profile by the way. So thanks to the micro profile working group. So for let, letting us steal it. Yeah, for letting us steal it. Uh, so uh, you know, someone says that all models are wrong. Some are useful. This is one of them. Like, it's not fair or right to say that Jacquard microprofile is Jacquard AE for microservices, but it's close enough that like the mental picture is helps you to understand what it's about. If you know slightly what Jacquard AE is, then it, then this. Statement kind of makes sense, right? If you think of all Java E, that makes a bit more sense because it's a kind of subset plus 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 things, and then you put this, and it's a, it's a, again it's an opinionated set of things that will let you create microservices uh, with Java. So that's the short version of that. Yeah, the short version. So here are all the microprofile specs uh, from the current version, which is out, uh, 5.0. Six is just around the corner. Things will gonna be looking different, just so you know that. But you know, for now, this is the the, the, the production version, so we we'll stick to that. Yeah, and I also think it's worth mentioning one thing, and that's the point where Rustam touched upon upon is that micro profile is uh, opinionated to a much bigger degree than what Jakarta E is. Like it can pro probably kind of the same that Jakarta E core profile uh, is kind of opinionated. So it's micro profile. You can see that you find JAXRS here, but you don't have JAXVS, for instance. Mm. There are several of those, those, those choices that are made in micro profile to say that like, well, this is the way, this is the way. Uh, well, like, mm. This is how we suggest that you do it. Uh, if you do otherwise, then that's more work for you. Yeah. And well, uh, whatever, pretty much, if I'm not mistaken, uh, all, everything that you see Jakarta on is going to be smashed into one little box called Jakarta uh, Core Profile. Core Profile, thank you. It's yeah. getting a bit late in the, during the, like, <laughs> in the day. Yes. Yeah. Things are moving slow up there. Yeah. So let's head faster through. Okay. So, working groups for Micro Profile, uh, those organizations you can see here, both some user, Java user groups, some big corporations. Uh, several other people representing them. You have already seen around at the conference. And the, the cool thing is that actually it's not just the companies, it's also a bunch of jugs, at least three that we can see here. Yeah. So, so uh, the German umbrella jug, uh, I guess that's the, I guess you can say that. Yeah. Uh, and Atlanta jug and also Go uh, Garden State. Yeah, Garden State, New Jersey, I think. Yes. Yeah. US. So why micro profile? Well, you heard this through all, out all the conference, so we won't repeat much of it. But like, write your logic, right? You can with micro profile, you can write very little business logic, like, and even less uh, like implementation generic uh, logic. Like, mm -hmm. you don't have to write REST endpoints, like the underlying REST handling uh, code yourself. You don't have to write implement JAX or uh, JSON B yourself. All of these things. So write your logic, focus on that. Often hard enough. Uh, lightweight, yeah, and interchangeable. So that if you start out with one micro profile uh, runtime and you figure out that, well, I sh actually I should use another one, you can do that without changing your code that much. And that was really nice because we've, that was actually very useful, especially in the beginning when 
Uh, the things were still in heavy development, I guess you can say that. Yeah, rapid development. Rapid development, probably. Yeah. It's another nice word, way of saying that. But, so things were, you know, breaking sometimes. So we had some issues for, for example, with REST clients. You know, we use some kind of runtime, and it just gives you the weirdest errors you've seen in your life. And then you're like, I have no idea what it is. It doesn't make sense. And then you switch, and it just works. It was a bug in the other one. So, you know, and then you could actually just switch between different implementations, and uh, it would be quite easy to switch, but also it can be, there can be reasons, uh, several reasons for that. It can be bugs, can be requirements, can be, uh, I don't know, uh, platform thing. But the point is that you can do it. You don't have to do it every day just for the heck of it, but you can. Um, yeah. Yeah, so there are, lot, there are lots of implementations. Uh, some of them will be showcasing, some others not. Like, and they are compatible with different, different versions of MicroProfile. Mm. So from my, MicroProfile 4.1, which is like the previous one before the one that's out now, it started with the concept of like official uh, compatibility uh, in the same sense that Jakarta E has. But before that, everyone could say, kind of say, or there wasn't a structured process of saying you were compatible, but these are the app servers that, or runtimes that are considered um, compatible with my, uh, MicroProfile. Mm. Right, so that's uh, with, with the kind of brief introduction of MicroProfile, micro uh, it's probably worth also mentioning where you start. Where do you, where do you, yeah. What can you do to get it uh, running? Um, yeah, so like when you get from the business logic we showed, showed you in the beginning, like where do you have to get it into MicroProfile? There are kind of like two, two, angle, or like two angles, uh, so to say. One is like the micro. MicroProfile Starter, the official one, you can find at start.microprofile.io. Um, and I think it's fair to say that we love the ID, uh, and, but someone needs to do some more effort, put some more effort into it for, to, for it to be really, really useful, I'd say. It's like and it's open source, so all yeah. of us can do this. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, it's worth having a look at it, like playing around with different Java versions, different MicroProfile versions, and so on. Uh, and you get, you get some working things, you get lots of night demos, so nothing wrong with that. But there are several app servers which have their own uh, starters, built them on like, the same mm. principles, so to say. So Open Liberty has its own, Quarkus has its own, Helidon from Oracle has its own. And they, they provide other things as well, especially Quarkus has a super long list of things. But uh, MicroProfile is one of them, so you can search, click, and it's going to be inside the palm that is being generated for you. So that's, uh, that's a nice, a nice uh, thing. So, uh, well, obviously, you can also generate it as an um, uh, archetype thing from Maven as well, but that's, that's a different story. This is the starter kind of point and click thing and push the button and download the file part. Um, so now that we have this thing running on your machine or my machine, uh, and it's, uh, well, it's a local host, uh, it's still on URL, we've put, we've used the microprofile things, you know, with the paths and with all these things that generate uh, a, a restful service for us, and that's, you know, happy days. I guess we're done now, right? Then we can just go and, I think there are beers outside, yeah. Yeah, but so we'll keep you for a bit longer, I think. Yeah, because like, okay, so it works on my machine, now you do what? Well, we ship your machine. <laughs> By containerizing it, right? Docker. Um, yeah. So yeah, instead of shipping your machine, we would rather put it into a smaller little thing and ship that instead. And um, again, this is not a very big uh, uh, discovery. I mean, now we all talk about containers. We put everything in containers and things yeah. like that. We um, haven't talked about it anymore. We just do it, right? Which, yeah, well, we, we, we're kind of over the hype uh, thing. Um, long time ago. Uh, but so uh, things to consider, just to mention it, this is not a talk about Docker, we're not about talk about how you should do the things, but to mention a few things that you should keep in mind is, you know, multi-stage builds, uh, slim base images, using layers and making sure that you can utilize those layers and things like that is probably a good idea for your kind of container hygiene or whatever you can call that. Yeah, and all of these are like things we have put quite some effort into like, when playing around with MicroProfile and different, different runtimes. Yeah. Like some of the app servers provide you with a Docker file, but like for our use when we, we want to do Git push and then 
things to build and then to be pushed into production. We found that those docker files aren't really suitable for that. You need to yeah. do some. Well, they have this assumption that you do Maven package on your own computer first and then do. The point is that those docker build. containers are kind of demo getting started thing and it, they're fine for that, but if you're going to go to production or anything serious, you probably need to do something about it. So now you've written code, you, you can make it run and respond to what you, uh, the way you want. Um, we have containerized it and well, obviously the next step would be to make it available because we want to make it available for people, for users. Uh, and the next thing would be to either host it yourself or put it to the cloud because we want to, our thing is to make it available for people and use as little management as possible with those things, right? That's the serverless part that will come to later. So the first step would be to put it on the cloud. Um, there are several ways of doing that. Obviously, you can just rent a VM or create a VM on the cloud and then just put it there and let it run. Uh, this is what we've been doing 20 years ago. We don't do this kind of stuff anymore. So now you want to do uh, a pipeline, you want to have some kind of deployment of a thing, and you want to make it a bit more streamlined. Uh, generally, if you create, if you want as little management as possible, another uh, statement from two captains of this uh, here is that you need to automate your stuff. Uh, and you need to automate a little bit more than you think that you need because you will have a lot of headache if you don't, and if you really want to go serverless and everything, you really need to automate as much as possible. So, um, yeah. I guess we could say that what we want to accomplish is that we write, write our business logic, we hopefully test it locally to make sure that to see that everything is fine. Nah, we do we test in production. We did. Well, we it happens. We like to cry a lot. <laughs> well, like we, we write our business logic, we do git, git push, and then some minutes later, it's available in production. That's like what we want to accomplish. Exactly. So that's the automation level we're aiming for. And the automation level is that usually many clouds, so our examples will be on Google Cloud. It does not have to be that, it can be any other cloud. Uh, the thing is, uh, we need to pick, we, we had to pick something, we picked this one. Yeah. Um, most could, of the, yeah. Yeah, you could perfectly find the like Jenkins or GitHub yeah. Actions or Azure DevOps or whatever. And most of the cloud providers would typically have two ways of doing that. They're kind of their own, like Cloud Build, which is meant to be a one-stop shop. Just do it and, uh, and, and we'll fix everything for you. Or it can be more like a third-party thing, like GitHub Actions or you know, Jenkins, whatever. Um, so this is the, the, the simpler version of the build tool that can automate things. And with this one, you can choose basically between creating a more, uh, what do you call that, more kind of proprietary version of a YAML file, or you can do a Docker files. But both should work in a more or less a similar way, and other cloud providers will be pretty much similar. Yeah, so I think like our advice is like start with the Docker file you have, try, uh, try to run a build with that, see, and see what happens. If so you get some strange errors, like if you're doing native, you, you might run out of memory, then you might need to do some mm. specific configurations. But uh, yeah, start with the Docker file, see if that's enough for you. If not, head over to the specific one. So cloudbit.yaml, to be short on that one, that's pretty much the same like a Jenkins file uh, or a what's it called, yeah, dot GitHub thing in GitHub Actions. It's same. Jenkins build file, what's it called? It's, they, they have a name for that. Uh, yeah, yeah well, whatever. You, okay. know, you know what you mean. Um, yeah. Okay, so now we have, have a container image somewhere in the cloud, right? We built it in, in our case, Google Cloud, and which ended up producing an image for us. Now we do what? Well, we do make that Im image available for people, uh, and that we do by serverless. Yeah, so again, we're trying to minimize the number of hours we spend on this and managing it. So serverless is really nice because, well, serverless is not really without servers, it's more manageless, right? You do not have to um, put uh, many hours into managing and scaling it up and down and all that. So um, in this case, we're using uh, Cloud Run, which is a managed service. If you want to do it on-prem on your own machines and stuff, you can have a look at Knative, which is uh, going to give you a kind of similar uh, yeah. functionality. Yeah, I think Cloud Run is built on top of Knative, right? So it's pretty much the same as AWS Lambda and 
yeah, functionality. Yeah, so the thing is, like, serverless is a kind of weird thing. It's been used on many things. So normally, pe when people think about serverless, they think of Lambda functions or whatever that's called in other cloud providers. Uh, cloud functions, Lambda function, FN project, you know, different names. But short, small, tiny little pieces of code that can actually just run, uh, execute, die, and, you know, and be no more. This one is a bit more longer running thing. So you can actually run a full container with full application and spend a bit more time uh, doing stuff with it, with it. And it also gives you ability to do like traffic splitting and everything. So again, I'm mentioning all that just to give you an idea which thing that you might be, want to be looking for your own cloud of choice. Uh, look for something that can run for a longer time, look for something that can let you do uh, things like A-B testing and sp traffic splitting and, you know, testing new versions by redirecting parts of your traffic to a new service and so on, so on, so on. It will make your life easier if you want to do this kind of uh, application development. Anything else we should mention here? Um, we should mention the characteristics of serverless, but like, okay, before that, it works. So now you can see that the URL is public. Uh, like I think it's we have it down so like don't DDoS us you're getting a, you're getting an error but now it's available in the cloud uh, so we're basically done in the sense that it's available for. So the funny story of that is yeah. that the project was called Random Strings. And if you look at the keyboard, D and S are very close to each other. So I kind of sometimes when I was typing it fast, I ended up with calling it Ransom Strings. That's a different kind of service. We do not provide that. <clears throat> Just saying. Yeah. Um, so when not to go serverless, so we really like serverless, but it's, it's suitable for those situations where you have, we, you can go rather stateless, do not have much, that much state in your application, and your server starts up fast. Mm. You, because the characteristics of serverless is like, when you have no traffic, it scales down number of instances to zero. When you get lots of traffic, it scales up. And in both cases, you can see that, well, whenever a user invokes your application, if no one else has been using it for like an hour, then it needs to cold start, right? Mm. And if that takes 10 seconds, then I as an end user would be like, yeah, skip this thing. I'm going another, another place. I, I won't wait for that long. So you need your app server to re your runtime to start really fast. So if you want to go serverless, you really need to think about that. I mean, we've all been there. Back in the, like, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, we would deploy things on a Tomcat, and the first start would always be kind of crazy. So, you know, you would even create, uh, sometimes we did create, back in the day, a little script that would ping your application early Monday morning, so it kind of wakes up and is uh, ready to, 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 to mingle. So, you know, it's, um, we used to do this kind of weird stuff. Now we have serverless, and now we're doing this now we're having this problem a little bit more often. So that might be a bit of a challenge. What you can do is to make it fast. Uh, again, kind of obvious uh, thing, but yeah. what is not very obvious is how do you make it fast? Because you have to think of optimizing things. You have to optimize startup time for your container. So size of your container, you have to optimize the uh, start up time for your application inside the container. You have to uh, think about, you know, all this loading and if you want to do lazy loading or not and things. So there's a lot of things that you probably should think about while, while doing this kind of things. Yeah. And runtimes do differ. As you've probably have seen at uh, several talks uh, throughout this conference, people compare them. They have different usage of CPU, usage of memory, usage of resources, startup times, different things, right? Yeah, different features as well. Mm. So like, um, yeah, and for those who went to Andra's talk just before this one, uh, you also noticed like Piranha Cloud as an alternative, which is looks really fa fascinating. But we haven't. It was new to me, new to me of today. But so that's not that's out of scope for our talk. But that's mm. also interesting. But like uh, speaking of runtimes, there is like the new kill, cool kid on the block, which luckily implements MicroProfile. Uh, Quarkus from Red Hat. It's, yeah, it's, it's getting kind of not so new kid, but it's still a new, newer, uh, one of the newer kids. Uh, Newish, yeah. Ish. And I think like what, what we can say about Quarkus is that it's made to be run inside a container. You're moving. So with Quarkus, you do lots of the optimi optimizations and uh, tailoring of your application at build time. That, mean, that means that building your application can take some time. Um, running it will be faster. Mm. We'll talk even more about that later on. 
And we, we've done a few talks around microprofile and, and tried things with different runtimes. So the, the, the kind of the interesting, the eye opener for me was that when we created a uh, Docker composed file with four or five different services running on four or five different runtimes, uh, before all the other four run, uh, runtimes were about to start, I mean, be before they actually even started logging that, hey, I'm about to wake up, uh, Quarkus was done booting. So th it is a little bit faster. It is uh, really, when you, especially when you put them together with the other, uh, other kids uh, in, in, on that block. Yeah, so if you have written your application in, by using microprofile, like the microprofile specification Java code only, or, or Kotlin, whatever, but preferably Java, um, and you want to switch from another uh, app server into Quarkus, then what you need to do is, well, some uh, download starter, a couple of docker files, and like pom files on the other config files, um, and like adapt the pom file to suit with your project. You move the config uh, f to application properties, which is where Quarkus, where Quarkus finds its properties. Uh, you update your global YAML or docker file, as we spoke about earlier, and you go. So what we don't, and yeah, that's quite, it's a bit of plumbering, but it's like, what you can see is there's no, nothing here about the Java code. Mm. You don't need to change, change the Java code at all to move from, from say, Open Liberty to Quarkus or to Cumulus or to Helidon or whichever microprofile implementation. Uh, yeah, which is pretty much the same concept as you probably familiar with, with from Jakarta E already. It's the same thing here. And now we have a now we have a serverless. Um, well, no, we don't have. Well, what do we have actually? Serverless. It's a serverless function that is relatively fast to to run without we actually done any optimizations or anything to the code. We just change the runtime, and it already gives us quite a bit of the improvement with this. Uh, simple logic, and it probably will be some improvements for most most of the applications just out of the box. And then you can start, you know, optimizing your code, making sure that it is uh, even it's possible to shave off some milliseconds here and there. Yeah. So now it's running. Now we have the same thing running on Quarkus, and it's uh, it's about well the URL is ugly but you know this is the, what gets generated you can always change to a custom uh, URL and so on so custom domains and stuff like that so that's not the case that's not the thing yeah. the last thing you can do is well you know you can always make it stronger faster uh, and so on yeah and luckily we got this is like the slide we never get time to talk about but today we do so that's that's great because Quarkus you can run in two modes. Uh, you can run it in JVM mode, which is like we, what we indicated on earlier, but you can also compile it to native, to a native binary. Right? And if you do compile it to native binary, uh, that's a compilation pro, that, that's a trade-off, like everything in programming, is, in, in programming is trade-off, right? Everything is trade-off, always. Yeah, so like when you do run native, it starts really fast. It's a, so I run Quarkus native uh, in serverless on Google Cloud, like the same tech stack we've been talking about now, uh, as a, on my, one of my side projects, we do, I run it as a backend for frontend, which means that whenever a user invokes the web page, the, the, the backend server has to start up and give like a synchronous response. And that's perfectly fine with Quarkus Native. Mm. It starts fast enough that that's actually not a problem. What takes time is the login process which goes to another external service. So Quarkus Native is really, really fast uh, to run, but it takes quite a lot of time uh, to build it. Mm. Of course, depending on the size of your applications, but whereas like you can do the build we showed you in Cloud Build in like I don't remember a minute or so mm. uh, when Quarkus or another app server in JVM mode, if you're running in native, it's like several minutes, it's four or five minutes or so. And also, it probably will eat a bit more resources, so you need to get more memory and things like that. But your users will not really notice that. This is your kind of plumbing you do in a back uh, back office, and you know. For them, if the new application is deployed in, in five minutes instead of one minute, that's, they don't care. But uh, the, uh, the, what they care is the response time that they get uh, right away uh, when they actually try to use the service, which is nice. So um, changing things to binary mode, to, 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 to native, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it, it will make it much, 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 much faster. And it's uh, quite fun 
thing to compare those as well. Yeah, and I also think it's, it's worth mentioning that native and serverless go very good together, I think, in the sense that, well, there are some things you lose when doing native, right? You lose the entire JVM. Uh, but like, when you're doing serverless, you might, this, your runtime might not be running for that long. So like, it shuts down after five minutes or 10 minutes anyways. Mm -hmm. So like, if you have a memory leak or something, that's like, okay. Um, <laughs> in 10 minutes, it'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, that's one way of fixing memory leaks. Uh, <laughs> but okay, well, for now we're done. So now we've done like we started with the code, we put, made it run on something, we made it um, uh, run in, in a container, put it on a cloud, made that uh, container in the cloud be managed automatically, so we don't have to think about that, and um, and n now also made it faster, so optimized it without even touching the code. So the code we've written is, you know, as is. Um, this is, a, of course, this is a super simplified uh, application just for, for, for demo purposes only. The real applications will be a little bit different, but um, we can always talk more about that. Uh, here is the idea is to let you um, play around uh, with the code yourself and see how we have done things and uh, if that works for you, if you can try out going all this way if you're interested and um, if if uh, oh the last thing actually is quite fun um, multi-stage builds for Quarkus is also an, a, a very interesting thing that will make your builds for Quarkus faster and less uh, hardware hungry as well so that's another nice thing to mention so the last yeah. link there it's a demo there as well um, yeah, so this is pretty much it, what, what we have, and um, this is us on Twitter. If you want to find us, ping us, ask any questions, and I think we have a few minutes uh, for nice. questions, comments, ideas, anything goes. And uh, like I said, this is a super simplified solution, but we can always talk about more advanced uh, ways of doing that uh, as well. So, anyone? There's a hand over there. Yeah. We'll give okay. you a mic then. Yes. No? Okay. Ah, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll repeat it. Yes. Uh, one remark uh, about uh, the implementation of microprofile. Yes. Um, let's see. Yeah. You mean this one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, doesn't exist anymore. So it's true. Yeah. 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 And um why is this the Yes, you're you you're right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's that's a very good point. Uh those slides have yeah. been surviving a few, few, few re refactorings. Yeah, like, yeah, this, like, uh, no, yeah. yeah, this one is the official slide from the 5.0, which was released in December last year. So it's dated. You're totally yes. correct, and hopefully it will be updated in when 6.0 is up, uh, is out. Then we should probably just remove Thorntail anyway. But yeah, yeah. it's the, it used to be there back then. But you're totally correct. Thorntail is dead. Long live. Um, uh, Quark is wild for a small rye. Yes, a small rye <laughs> implementation that is used all the other places. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. That's uh, <clears throat> that's that's a very very good point. Anyone anyone else? Okay. Then I go back to this so you know where to find us. And while I do that, I think I'll say thank you very much for coming. And thanks. Thanks.